Tiffany, the other day we had a closing. The end of it was very challenging. Yeah. Yeah. And the main reason it was challenging is because the seller. Yes. And it wasn't our seller. So we were representing the buyer, Mm -hmm. but the seller, it, it was just really not good. I don't know how else to say it. Now, why do you think from looking at it kind of from the outside, Mm -hmm. why did it go bad at the end? I think that seller just got really overwhelmed. Yeah, because we know um, based on some things he shared with us that he had lived in the house for over a decade. Right. And when people start to get overwhelmed, how do they like what in his thought process? What do you think he started doing? To me, I think he started to procrastinating to not deal with the overwhelming feelings. Yeah, so once you get overwhelmed, and I'm going to be honest, I think this is any area of our life, Mm -hmm. but when we get overwhelmed, we pull back and go, you know what, I'm not doing anything. Mm -hmm. And for him and us and the buyers, that just made it worse. Yeah, Yeah, for sure. So, like, if he had been our client... We would have tried to make sure he didn't get overwhelmed. Because mm-hmm. what's what's some of the things that we do to help that process to not happen? Communicate and just remind of dates that are coming up mm-hmm. and even offering just any kind of guidance as to, you know, what your what the seller's next step should be and kind of where they should be at, you know, at each point in the process. Yeah, because as a seller... Like, if, if you're not getting the guidance to kind of help you navigate, as soon as you start getting overwhelmed, you're just going to start slowing mm-hmm. down. And then that makes the end process not good for anybody. No. Now, it's all closed, and the buyer is in and mm-hmm. smiling and, yes. and all that. And hopefully he's smiling. But that last 24 hours, I really felt bad for him. Me too. And I think education would have helped him. I think so.